Welcome to No Longer Conformed. I'm Eric Garthy, and we are studying the book of Ephesians, The Mystery Revealed. In this session, we'll be looking at Ephesians chapter 5, verses 11 to 21, Possibility of Right Living. Living as light in the world involves seeking God's will. Uh, verse 10 of this chapter finding out what is acceptable to the Lord. Living as light also involves reproving the darkness. As Christians, as light, we can reprove the darkness in several ways. If you haven't already turned there in your Bible, turn to Ephesians chapter 5, verse 11. That's where we're going to be looking in this session. Uh, Several ways that we can reprove darkness as Christians, living as light in this world. First, reprove the darkness by separating from it. Verse 11, and have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather expose them. We become a kind of rebuke or exposure of evil and sin when we separate from it. Second, reprove the darkness by silence of it. Verse 12, for it is shameful even to speak of those things which are done by them in secret. We can rebuke evil by silence. How? Well, it's disgraceful for sinners to do wrong. It's also disgraceful to talk about the sin. Believers are not to do so. Silence about what evildoers do helps reprove it. Third, reprove the darkness by shining light on it. Verse 13, but all things that are exposed are made manifest by the light, for whatever makes manifest is light. Simply let our light shine on it. The presence of a strong Christian casts light on the deeds of evildoers. The light of, of a godly life will, by contrast, make ungodliness visible. Fourth, reprove the darkness by leading others from it. Verse 14, therefore he says, Awake, you who sleep, arise from the dead, and Christ will give you light. A more permanent way to reprove evil is to call evildoers into the light of Christ, awakening them from their sinful stupor, experiencing rebirth and becoming light themselves. The ultimate reproof of evil is the conversion of those who practice evil, which brings us to the fifth expression of the Christian walk. Verse 15, See then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time, because the days are evil. Make your conduct match your profession as a Christian. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 1. Remember, walk worthy of the calling with which you were called. Um, second, put the old life of sin behind you. Chapter 4, verse 17, you should no longer walk as the rest of the Gentiles walk. Third, relate to God and others in love. This same chapter 5, verses 1 and 2, be imitators of God and walk in love. And then fourth, seek to be pleasing to the Lord, verses 8 and 9 of this chapter. Walk as children of light, for the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness, righteousness, and truth. And in verse 15 here, live carefully and wisely in this world. The word circumspectly means to be looking in all directions, always. Why? Well, 
because of the enemy. 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 8. Be sober. Be vigilant. Because your adversary, the devil, walks about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. Take advantage of God's opportune moments in life. What is it that makes a Christian wise and careful? Well, look at verses 17 and 18. Therefore, do not be unwise, but understand what the will of the Lord is. And do not be drunk with wine in which is dissipation, but be filled with the Spirit. This is a call to understand God's will and maintain a Spirit-filled life. And what are the results of a Spirit-filled life? Well, verse 19 down to verse 21, speaking to one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord, giving thanks always for all things to God the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, submitting to one another in the fear of God. Praise in group gatherings, thanksgiving in all things, and submission to other believers. The Holy Spirit forms the mind of Christ in us. Well, let me ask you, does all this characterize your life? Spirit-filled living is not an option, but a command. When we choose to ignore God's commands, we sin. Obedience requires continual attention. A Spirit-filled life is being controlled by the Holy Spirit. Charles Stanley said, It is not a matter of how much of the Spirit you have, but how much of you the Spirit has. You have a great day.